Are you a fan of Jurassic World who but have run out of ideas for this park? Well, fear not. I am here to help you. Hello everybody, I'm Rexy's Gaming Bro, and here to help you with your islands. Giving you some tips for building some new and exciting exhibits. And for this video, well, we're going to go over 10 of my ideas for new exhibits or islands. So let's get underway with tip number one. Use the elevation tool as well as monorail tracks to build a cave system for your dinosaurs. Now, in modding, you can do this even further. However, all you have to do realistically is first use the monorail tracks as your layout. Use, place a path in the exact size that you want to have your cave then use single strips of the monorail to um, lay out the roofing. Then afterwards, do not delete the path tool, but use it as your um, barrier for the elevation. Line it up, and then you can use it to make sure you do not elevate the monorail tracks. Now, this will not look 100% as you can see here, but imagine your view from a viewing vent it would still look really entertaining. Now I recommend you use this for um, larger dinosaurs, seeing as how you cannot lower the monorail tracks, at least in the non-modded version of the game. But if you do want to um, learn how to make a cave system with mods, then I recommend checking out Evolution Square, who is a fellow dinosaur YouTuber who has tip videos on how to make certain enclosures with the mods. Tip number two, use the scenery trees as well as the paleo feeders to make a paleo botany facility. Now, to make this an exhibit where your guests will come and see it, I recommend putting at least one dinosaur, such as for this video I've used the Parasaurolophus, and I recommend you use it as a smaller enclosure and then use the scenery trees as like the new paleo plants where you grow them and then you test the plants out with a dinosaur. You can also use the um, greenhouse facilities and put them in the enclosure if you wish. However, you will have the risk of um, your guests panicking because they'll be inside with the Parasaurolophus, but it'll still be a lovely enclosure despite its um not aesthetically pleasing look. Tip number three. Make your enclosures fit for specifically dinosaurs from the same time period. Now in this example I'm using Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, and Diplodocus to represent a Jurassic enclosure. Now if you know Jurassic Park Operation Genesis you know that most of your um, support for, from the guests would be from how um, real life the enclosures would be. This would allow them to feel like they were really going back in time. And for Jurassic World Evolution, while it doesn't matter what dinosaurs you put together, it is still satisfying to see dinosaurs from the same time period together. Now for this tip, I definitely recommend you use it for um, Things like sandbox and definitely do not use it in campaign or challenge mode because you have the risk of dinosaurs dying, especially the carnivores because usually people will tend to try and modify their herbivores to be able to fight back, but since it takes more modification upgrades for herbivores to get them balanced with the carnivores, the, the game thinks that you are making it so that they will win and the carnivores will not. Tip number four, use, make, make your park based off of a city. Now this is an idea that I came across recently and I thought it was an excellent idea. You have multiple options and I recommend this for the um, Jurassic World era and not Jurassic Park. Unless you have mods then you can use the mixed eras and that way you can do it a lot better. But how you can do this is simple. One, you, if you want to make a guest area, like say a grocery area, build a, use a path as like a parking lot, and then the buildings as like Walmarts or um, gift shops. If you want to make it even 
better, you can use the monorails over the buildings and make it more like a mall. And you can also do things like add a little mini zoo, such as, a, such as how I'm showing you right here. You could also build things like an airport, which, little recommendation for you, I always use a spot. I always use the Spinosaurus for it, because, well, Jurassic Park 3 has them on an airstrip. And to top it all off, you can build, you can build a highway with um, the um, Jurassic Tour to help represent the roads. Now, this is a little iffy. This, I would recommend using um, mixed eras for, because then you could use the F Ford Explorers from the Jurassic Park era. But if you don't have mods, then this is the way you can do it. Other areas that you could include for your um, Jur Jurassic City, as you might say, is a residence area with backyards and homes. For the Jurassic World era, I definitely recommend you use um, the science building as like it's a fancy, um, expensive looking hotel or something, or even residence. Just ignore the... Um, towers here and the big satellites. Tip number five. Use the monorail tracks again, except for this time, to build indoor enclosures. Now this is something I've seen a lot of people do, and it's a way to help differentiate your enclosures. Now, you can use as much of the monorail as you want. You can even build your entire park as like an indoor enclosure. But say you were wanting to replicate a zoo, use it for smaller con herbivores or carnivores for this, such as in this example, I'm using homalocephalae and Velociraptor. Now, if you want to try and get a rid of all of the um, pillars, then I recommend using the scenery trees as well as the feeders. This will, these will automatically delete them as soon as they are in the radius of them. Now. Regular trees do not um, affect the um, monorail track, so if you want to get rid of the pillars, don't use those to try and do it. But despite this, even with the pillars, it makes it look more um, comfortable and a lot different than your regular outdoor enclosures. And if, for your guests, it could be a way to get out of the sun. Now for this example, I've just made it a huge enclosure with the monorail, but you could go even further with having a pathway going through the enclosures with fences, of course, and then you would be able to make it so that you're walking in the building with them. Tip number six. Ma tip number six. Use inspiration from movies to build your parks. Now, this is something that I've um, always wanted to do, and as the example shows, it's an Avengers. Um, enclosure and you can do this with any movie that you want if you want to make your um, movie experience more um, amazing build it in your parks and as for an example here I've decided to do the Avengers park and even I while building this I was inspired on a new project which will be of the Lord of the Rings which will come soon for the channel now you can do this for your entire park, or even as I've just done for an enclosure with the Avengers logo. And I'm a viewing tower to represent the Avengers tower, but you know, just working with what we have here. Tip number seven. You build a hotel around your enclosure, or even inside of it. This is something I've always done with the hotels because it makes your parks way better for your guests anyway. Now, in the Jurassic World era, you can use the event, you can use the hotels in the center because of their massive size, and then usually have a fence around. Then when you look, if you imagine yourself looking through, then you would be able to see the dinosaurs from a higher view than you could get. And better than using the Jurassic World era for this tip, I recommend definitely using Jurassic Park era. Using the lights as the barrier, you can get the hotel extremely close, and when dinosaurs come to feed around, then they will be able to um, witness them very close. And don't touch them, guests, please. We want your safety first. Tip number eight. 
build your park or island as a biological preserve. Fitting the words of John Hammond, you can use this idea to its fullest. Have your park set up in a way that you can have both carnivores and herbivores thriving together. Now in Sandbox, you can do this in a way that you can have them live together without fighting, but you can use this idea for challenge mode and even campaign mode. Now for those, you would have to make it so that they are very split apart, otherwise they will try and break out. But to solve that problem, I recommend double layering your fence. This will make it harder for them to break in, and then by the time they break through the first fence, you will be able to get them secure and moved away from them. You may be thinking, what about the guests? Well, I recommend before you make any dinosaurs or release them, have it set up, have a guest area set up for them to be comfortable in. Such as, make sure you place at least a few, two hotels, your ACU ranger facility, and the guest's needs. I also recommend for this always having at least one tour that goes throughout the entire park. That way, if they are on the other side of the island where viewing towers or vents may not be able to see them, guests will then be able to see the entire park through a nice tour. Now, make sure that dinosaurs cannot attack it if you are in sandbox because then you will have a lot of times it'll be destroyed. And this tip you can use for both Jurassic Park and Jurassic World era, making the true sanctuary that Claire wanted for her, the dinosaurs. Tip number nine, build your island as a specific biome or a famous landscape. Such as for this one, I am showing you a canyon park that I designed a few years ago. I think it was in 2018, good lord. Now for this tip, I recommend you use it as a type of challenge in sandbox mode. Now while you use sandbox to uh, make building parks easy, I recommend adding a little bit of flavor to them. When you make the biome or the landscape, I recommend that you do not try and demolish any part of it while you are building. Work your way through it and adapt to any changes of your plan you need such as for the canyon, lay it out and then use certain platforms as guest areas and then the inside areas as enclosures. You can also use some of the platforms for the dinosaurs, but I always recommend you use, or even for mountains, you can use um, some um, steep edges as, as little guest areas and then you can build on the lower levels of the mountain, the enclosures. And this will help make your parks more creative than, and it'll make them yours because nobody else will be able to do that because nobody can make your mountain or your, or your canyon as this example. Finally, tip number 10. Build an abandoned facility for your dinosaurs. Now this one is a reference to the Lost World novel because, and also the Lost World film, because we know that um, the lot that the facilities on there were destroyed and abandoned. Now, the way you can do this is first of all, I recommend before you do any other enclosures, if you're doing this on sandbox, do this one first, and then what you do is let a storm go through and destroy all the buildings. Now this will provide a damaged look to them and then what you do is just put in some dinosaurs and make the plants feel overgrown and unbroken. I rec For dinosaurs I recommend for enclosures like this, I usually recommend dinosaurs like Carnotaurus, or even Velociraptor. As for the Lost World fans out there, in the novel, the Carnotaurus roamed the abandoned facilities, and for the Lost World, the Velociraptors did. You can use any kind of dinosaur for this, but I always like using dinosaurs that I know best for that. But anyway guys, those are my tips for exciting exhibits for you to do, or parks as you might say. Are there exhibits that you have done that I've shown you today and if you have 
What could you ever possibly show them to me? You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram, and I will be able to see these amazing um, exhibits that you have done. And also, guys, if you want me to do any of these ide exhibit ideas in my own parks, leave in the comments. Or if you'd like for some of the ones that I gave for building um, parks on. But anyway, guys, that's going to have to wrap up this um, tips video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd appreciate the like, and if you want to join the hunt and help support this channel a little bit more, hit the subscribe button, be safe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye